Hello, this is MakerJ101, and today I'm going to be remaking my boiler because this one is just unsafe. Um, tomato sauce can, not rated for pressure at all. So, I mean, even though I tested this up to 60 psi with heat and rust and everything like that, I just don't know when it could explode. These ends could pop off. I mean, pretty much anything could happen, and I could get a terrible steam burn, and that would not be fun. So, yeah, this is just not safe. So, if you guys are going to attempt this, especially with a tomato sauce can or something, that's not ready for pressure like that. Be extremely careful and make sure you know what you're doing and yeah, don't get hurt. Um, but so I'm gonna be remaking that and I'm gonna be using a propane tank. Just got this the other day. It's empty um, and I'm gonna be using this as my new boiler. It's about the same size, a little bit bigger, um, same diameter, a little bit longer as you can see. Um, but the weird thing is this can hold 28 ounces of tomato sauce while this can hold 16.4 ounces of propane. So propane must be a lot lighter or they don't fill it up very much. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm going to be using. So the next step I think is to pop this bottom off because we don't really want this. It's going to be kind of in the way. So I need to um, try to get that off. Probably just use a hammer or maybe cut it or something. Okay, so yeah, that was a lot of work peeling the bottom off. I did not expect it to be that hard. I thought it was just pressed fit on there. But apparently they decided to um, braze or weld or something it all the way around except for like a couple little spots and even the bottom so yeah this is how it came off and that was a lot of work with some pliers and now I just have to grind it and um, grind some of these sharp edges off and we should be good for some holes alright so I have all the sharp edges cleaned off the bottom so I sanded it up real nice um, now I'm trying to decide how many holes to put in the bottom and or how many um, flue tubes rather to put through it so I'm going to have some sort of pipe running through here and the exhaust gases from the burner will go through the tubes to heat up the water more efficiently. So I'm trying to decide how many of these to put through. Um, I was originally going to put use 3 quarter inch cuff per pipe, but since I don't have a very long piece, that wouldn't work. I could only make one out of it. So that's not going to work. The other option is to use a bunch of, um, I have a whole bunch of uh, three or one half inch copper pipe, but it's a little small, so I'd have to use quite a few of them in order to get enough flue gases through, I think. But that might be our only option unless I buy more. So I'm thinking four right now. I don't like that one there because it just sticks up into the middle too much, so I wouldn't be able to get the water level down very far before it starts melting the solder around it. So I think I'm going to go with four max of the one half inch or the other option is to go with one of these um, large ones and then two small ones on each side um, so I don't know yet I still have to decide <laughs> the next thing I have to think about is how I'm going to put hole in it because I don't have a very big drill bit I think this is the largest one I have and this is not very big even compared to this one so I'm going to have to do some grinding there to get it big enough so yeah we'll see what I do in a minute Alright, so I got the starter holes drilled. Now I just have to um, grind them out until they're big enough for the copper pipe. Alright, so I have three of the four, or rather six of the eight holes all um, largened. So I started out with a 3 8 inch drill bit, which is my largest one I have. Um, so I drilled a hole, and then I used the Dremel tool with the sanding bit to get it um, large enough for the pipe to go through. So here's my copper pipe. Let me just demonstrate that that fits in there. A little bit hard to get through with one hand. There we go. And that is our boiler tube to make it more efficient. So that's so three of them are done. I have one more to go. Um, the way I do this is basically just with the Dremel tool. I um, just take the I'm just using the sanding bits because those are the cheapest thing I have because my stone bit um, self destructed when I was using that. So the other ones I just don't really want to destroy them because this one got destroyed and the steel just seems to grind these down too fast I don't know what I'm doing wrong but they just grind down so fast so I only have a couple of those and I don't really want to use them <clears throat> but I have a ton of these sanding um, sanding wheels so I'm using up those and I can do about two holes per sanding wheel before it turns into this so <laughs> so it just pretty much falls apart after two or three holes so I basically just have I found that the largest one just seems to work best. I just have it at an angle like this and keep spinning around and it makes the hole large enough and then once it's large enough I can just stick it in and get it to the right size so it works really good.
Alright, so all the holes are drilled in there, so now all I have to do next is um, sand around the holes a little bit, and I think I can, well, cut my tubes, and then um, solder it in, I guess. Well, although I might want to um, paint or s something the inside to keep it from corroding. Alright, so the main part of the boiler or the pressure vessel is done. So, um, yeah, so now I just have to solder on the um, ports. I have all the holes cut. So, this is going to be where my um, valve goes to um, the steam valve. So, I cut a hole in there. This is going to be for the pressure, um, pressure gauge. And then the far one over here is going to be for the um, water filling and the pressure relief valve. We'll screw right on there. So I've got those holes all cut out. And then I have two holes drilled here. And that is going to be for my um, water gauge, which will be this. Let me line this up right. So this is going to go right there like that. I think I put it in backwards because it's not fitting. Yep, there we go. So that's going to go like that. I think I may need to replace that too because it seems to have cracked at the ends. Um, because the JV weld, as we found with my steam engine, seems to expand too much, so it cracked a whole bunch there. So this might um, bust or explode when I um, put 30 psi of pressure into it. So I think I'm going to replace that with plastic, but um, yeah, because it's just not safe. So that's going to get replaced with plastic instead of glass, and I'm going to use this um, tubing, and I have some fittings for it that go onto here. So I need to get the JV weld off and start over on that because that's... I mean it looks really nice but it's cracked at the ends and it's just not going to be safe. Um, anyways, so I've got all the boiler tubes in and just for your information, the boiler tubes are 18 centimeters long or about seven and a quarter inches so that's how long they are and they're three or um, one half inch copper pipe just your average copper pipe, I don't even know. Um, but there's actually a little bit of space in between some of them, which I'm not sure if I should try to flange them out a little bit um, or just fill that up with solder. I think solder will be fine, so that's probably what I'll do. And this is actually a pressure relief valve. I just found that out. Um, it might also be for filling, but I think it's a pressure relief valve because if you push, there's a little um, thing inside there, the other part, if you push on it, it releases the pressure. All right, so I got it painted mainly on the inside, but I painted the outside too just to make it look a little bit better. And then I sanded around the um, places where it's going to have all the um, adaptions on it. So yeah, so the main thing that I wanted to do is paint the inside so that it doesn't rust because it seemed like to me it was just steel on the inside. And before I put the paint in, I took gravel and put it in there with a little bit of water and shook it around to try to get all the um, just to get it clean because I painted it with some rust-oleum this is high temperature stuff not that I really need high temperature stuff but this is just the stuff my dad bought me so uh, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit a little bit high temperature for this but I mean it's it's fine <laughs> so it'll work um, so mainly on the inside it's supposed to keep it from rusting I don't know if it's gonna hopefully um, and then these are my boiler tubes and I got them all um, the ends all prepped up so they should accept solder real nicely. So I guess the next step is to start soldering those in. And I also um, replaced the glass sight gauge with this plastic. I'm going to use this plastic pipe instead because the glass one I was afraid it's going to explode. So um, yeah, that should be better. At least it won't fly glass shrapnel everywhere. But <laughs> Alright, so I just put some of your average pipe flux just around um, all of the joints, so lots of pipe flux on there. Lots of flux is your key if you want the solder to flow very well. And then I'm going to be using lead-free solder. So yeah, it's just pipe solder, pipe um, flux. Put it on there, and um, let's start heating it up and apply the solder. Okay, so I've got the boiler tubes all soldered on, or soldered in rather, and it, it's, I did a pretty poor job on it. I, it, 
the lead free solder just doesn't wick well and it didn't seem to be sticking very well to the um, or wetting the steel very well so I'm not sure if this is a special hardened steel or something or what maybe it's part stainless steel or but it was rusting so I'm not sure why it wasn't sticking maybe it has a metal coating or something on it but this end maybe did a little bit better but see still it didn't wet very well it really just didn't stick so hopefully it doesn't leak um, it looks pretty good but it just just like that area there it just it just kind of doesn't didn't stick well or it doesn't look like it from the from from the outside so the next step is to solder everything else on and um, then we should be able to pressure test it alright so that is all of the soldering done so soldered the um, steam output um, collector steam collector thing on the um, adapter for the pressure gauge and the filling port or whatever you call that uh, so yeah and so and then also the um, place for the sight gauge which is just gonna be this little plastic tube that's gonna go right on there and these actually they're not T's they used to be um, or I mean they didn't they're not elbows they're T's like this that I cut off and put solder on the ends so yep um, because I couldn't I didn't have any t um, elbows I just had T's so I have a bunch of these so I just used those and um, cut it off and then soldered it so um, but I mean really not much to it so I guess I'll have to give it a paint job again sometime and I guess the next thing is to attach this, seal everything up, and then um, do a pressure test on it to make sure there's no leaks anywhere. It's obviously going to hold at least 60 psi though, so no worries about that, but I still need to test it to make sure there's no leaks. Alright, so two leaks, one here, so where that connects on there, and one over here at the solder joint, so both in the same spot conveniently, so I'm going to um, replace that with a different one, make a new one, because I think that the... Um, the like whatever that inner part is that it connects to is um, dented a little bit so it doesn't make very good seal so I need to replace that so I'll do that. Alright so at a full pressure of 72 psi which is our water pressure here it does not seem to be leaking at all that I can tell so I don't see any drips over here it's no longer leaking around there or there so that's good or around the sight gauge rather, none on that end. The only places it's leaking of course is right here because I don't have any Teflon tape on there and here because I just have a bolt stuck in there that doesn't, that the threads don't even match. So <laughs> it's spraying out all over. Um, so yeah, but I didn't put the pressure gauge in there because it's only rated for 30 psi and the um, seven or the, the one that I have that the threads match um, that I'm gonna use on it is only rated for 30 psi and it'll probably um, uh, ruin the calibration of it so alright so the boiler is finally finished so yeah it looks pretty good I'd have to say so I'm pretty pleased with how it looks it I mean it looks like a boiler I mean it looks pretty good so I mean yeah it's got the nice flue tubes through there and everything and I actually cut them off to um, give the flue gases a little bit more room to go through um, and just to make it look a little bit nicer so cut those off and it looks pretty good. Polish the the um, solder up a little bit, and um, yeah, looks pretty good. So the next part is going to be building the firebox, but I'm going to save that for another video because this one's plenty long. So just going to make it out of steel and stuff like that. But I'll save that for the next video. And um, until then, um, thanks for watching.